In this video, I have elemental armor and tools that have crazy abilities, and there are even elemental bosses that can be defeated to get materials for even stronger gear. Not only that, but there's also an insanely strong army of the undead completely overrunning the world at night. As long as the undead king exists, this world will remain incredibly dangerous. My goal is to progress through each element, master them all, and then use my elemental powers to defeat the undead army. Will I be able to master the four elements and defeat the undead king? Let's find out right after today's sponsor, Genshin Impact. If elemental abilities interest you, then you will love Genshin Impact. It is an open world action RPG game available on PC, Android, iOS, and PlayStation. In this game, the massive open world is home to seven different kinds of elemental powers that your characters can use. Genshin Impact recently released a new 2.6 update, which adds a brand new area, a new artifact domain, and new Archon quests. This update also includes new events such as Hues of the Violet Garden and Spices from the West, and it also includes new story quests and challenges. It also features the first return of Kamisato Ayaka, a cryo character. What I love about Genshin Impact is definitely pulling for new characters. The designs are all phenomenal and they're always really fun to play with. Download Genshin Impact today from the link in the description and use this special code on screen for 60 Primo Gems and 5 Adventurers Experience. Thank you again to Genshin Impact for sponsoring today's video and let's continue. Day 1, I spawned into my world ready to master the elements. However, before I can do that, I needed obsidian and diamonds, meaning I had to get the basics done first. I punched a tree, I made a wooden pick, and then I got some stone from this nearby structure. I saw that there was a dungeon below, so I went and made my stone axe and pickaxe, then I went down there. In there, I opened a chest, and I got a bunch of iron and ender pearl, a lot of good stuff. I made an iron pick, and then I mined the emerald block to see a spawner below it. Luckily, nothing spawned for whatever reason, so I got the loot safely. I then found this goblin village, and whenever I would right-click the goblin with some emeralds, it would just start giving me stuff, and I assumed that it was meant to consume the emeralds, and then it was a bug, so I didn't keep going. I then stole the furnace, and I continued on my way. And then is when I realized that that goblin was not actually bugged, it was just taking the iron from my inventory, so now I had to get more of that. I killed some cows, I got some food, and then I killed some sheep for wool. Then I get attacked by this bouncing green slime, and it takes me down to half HP. I immediately cooked some food and ate it to heal up. I then spent the rest of that day hunting more animals for food and other items. The next morning, I made a small backpack, and then I began cooking food. And while that was going, I hunted some more animals, and I upgraded the backpack to medium. Once I had enough food, I went to find a cave with some iron so I could get to the elemental stuff as soon as possible. I found a nice cave in a forest with a lot of iron and I got up to 47 iron without even going that far below the surface. I went back up and I smelted the iron that I mined. I made iron armor and iron tools as soon as I had enough iron for it and then it was nighttime so I slept. The next morning I found this ruined portal and I couldn't find the chest so I'm like okay I'll try these goblin bombs that I got earlier to maybe you know blow it up. And turns out those do not break blocks, so I gave up. Then I killed a few sheep and I upgraded my backpack to the largest size. I came across this mountain range and I knew that that was an air biome. Each element has a corresponding biome which is needed to get the essences for elemental tools. The air one would be a bit scary without feather falling or something, so I'd wait a bit for that. After that, I found a ravine and I used water to get down there. Then I found a ravine inside the ravine and immediately saw these armored zombies. Those were the super strong zombies from the undead army. Then, just to be safe, I made a shield because you never know. Then I went down this hole that I found and I started mining for diamonds. The sooner that I got diamonds, the sooner that I could master the elements. And I was not getting diamonds at all. I mined a lot. I broke many pickaxes and I found no diamonds even by day four. I then found this cave and I figured, you know what? I'll risk it. What's the worst that could happen? And then I get jumped by this crazy ghost demon and a goblin and I nearly died. Yeah, back to my strip mine and I go- oh, there's enemies here too. Cool, I blocked off the zombie and then I kept strip mining. I was not going into any caves, that was way too dangerous. I kept mining for a painfully long time and then boom, I finally found diamonds. I was a little excited as you might be able to tell by my mouse freaking out. I mined them and it was a big chunky seven vein of diamonds. Very nice. Then right after, boom, a four vein, 11 diamonds now. 
My luck has turned around, gamers. I mined until a halfway through day five, and then I dug back to the surface. Back on the surface, I wanted to find a place to settle down and make a permanent home. My idea for a base was a tower where each floor was based on a different element, and it was going to be super cool, but... Of course, that needs a lot of materials. I decided on living in this plains biome right where I was because it was surrounded by a mountain and forests and a lake, and I kind of like the look of the area. The next day, I chopped some wood and I placed a few chests where I wanted to make my tower. Now, I needed the materials and I also had the diamonds to get some elemental stuff going, so I decided that my goal was to look for a fire biome. I wanted fire to be the first element that I mastered because fire's lit. Like, why wouldn't I? I cooked some food and after that was done, I got to looking. I immediately found a vanilla dungeon dungeon and after clearing it I looted the chest and I got recall potions. These would be super useful because they take me back to my spawn no matter where I am. Day 7 I looted this ruined portal for a golden apple and some obsidian and then I broke into this weird tent and got some TNT. I found this weird dungeon thing that looked like it was meant to be spawning zombies but I guess that doesn't really work too well during the day so I broke the spawners and I looted the chest for some ores and stuff. I then found this tower and right next to it an earth biome. The earth biome was not one that I really wanted to do right now because I was warned that it would be the the hardest so I would save it for later but I did decide to take on this town I went in and there were zombie spawners and chests on every floor I was able to get through most of it pretty easily but a bit higher up this baby zombie with a shovel starts bodying me luckily I had a shield so I was able to survive but that was terrifying I then just to be safe ate a golden apple and I went the rest of the way up the tower and I got some enchanted books some recall potions gold all kinds of stuff I also got a bobble that would increase my jump height which was pretty nice these towers would be very good to take on for EXP and stuff. The top had a Vex spawner, but luckily none were attacking me because Vexes are terrible to fight. On the roof, there was a bunch of free gold that I took, and then I was back on my search for the fire biome. Day 8 was kind of crazy. It was just a lot of traveling at first, but then I found this stone arch thing. I broke spawners at the top, and then I saw chests at the bottom. The first one, a name tag. The second one, a totem of undying and a god apple. Like, what are the odds of that? But like, actually though, vanilla chests don't normally do that, but I am definitely not complaining. Then I found a house and in it was one of those OP zombies. Just look at how many hits this thing is taking. Luckily it never hit me, but this is why I refuse to stay up at night until I get better gear. However, that house also gave me another totem of undying, so now I had two. Now, ideally they never even activate, but uh... <laughs> about that. By day 9, I still hadn't found a single fire biome. I did find a desert though, and I figured if anything would lead me to a fire biome, it would be a hot biome like a desert. And uh, no, it did not. But then I found a savanna biome, and if anything would lead me to a fire biome, it would be a hot biome like a savanna, yeah? So anyways, uh, day 10. I decided to sail in the ocean and forget the fire biome, there was barely even land. All the land that I found was the tiniest islands possible. I eventually found a lot of land, but it didn't really get me anywhere worthwhile. This was not going well. 10 days in, and I hadn't even found the fire biome to start using it. Day 11, I ended up finding another massive air biome. And yes, I could do air first, but I didn't want to. Fire was absolutely what I wanted to do first, I just had to keep looking. Day 12, it finally happened. I found a fire biome. This beautiful and netherrack filled biome Finally. So, to use elemental abilities, I needed essence. The weakest form of the essence came from the flowers in these biomes, so I ran around gathering as much as I could. I then found a bastion. A straight up bastion in the overworld. I went in and I actually got some pretty good stuff out of a chest, like an entire ancient debris. The piglins were all zombified because this was the overworld, meaning this was entirely safe to loot. I noticed it was nighttime, so I decided to sleep down here. However, I did not notice anything else worth talking about in the bastion. The next morning I went to the surface and then I mined a bunch of the blackstone bricks. I wanted to use these for the fire layer of my tower so this was a very nice find. I then spent all of day 13 harvesting all of the essence that I could find. And then I did not sleep that night. Now I know the night times were not safe because of the undead army however to get the second tier of the essence that I needed for elemental abilities, I had to kill these spirits in this biome. I figured that it would be a good idea to get as much as I could, so I waited around. At first, all that I was seeing were these really annoying skeleton things, but then I found spirits. 
These things took a ton of hits and of course they do set me on fire, but overall they were really slow and I could handle them. Every spirit that I killed would give one of the second tier of essence that I needed, so I figured that it would be a grind, but not a dangerous one. That is, until later that night. I saw three fire spirits at once and after taking one out, I was fighting the second one. What I did not realize is that these fire spirits drop an invisible bomb when they die and it blew up and killed me. Literally broke my totem of undying. Luckily I had that or it would have been all over. I put on my second totem and then I killed spirits safely for the rest of the night, getting up to a whole five essence. So the next day I decided to change my plan. My original plan was to master the fire element as soon as possible and then continue on from there. However, that night taught me that mastering an element was absolutely no joke and I decided that I would instead gear up a bit more first and then work on the element later. Then I found a nether fortress. This was an incredible find because I wanted nether bricks for my tower and I decided to start gathering a bunch. After getting a few stacks I used a recall potion and I went back to the world spawn. Yeah, I I was gonna head home because I definitely wanted to approach the whole elemental thing in a much smarter way. I arrived home on day 15, set up a sugarcane farm, and then I began smelting some glass. I then made a diamond vessel, and I put some ignis essence into it, and then I made an obsidian stick, and then an ignis dagger. Elemental daggers were the most basic form of elemental abilities. They, of course, were really good as melee weapons, but the fun part is when you throw them. I made another ignis dagger, and then I threw it at the mountainside, and it launched a flaming explosive projectile. This, however, does consume the dagger, so it was not the most useful, but it was pretty cool. And for now, this is all that I had to work with until I could beat those spirits a lot easier. Now, throwing these daggers was plenty strong, and essence-wise, it was pretty cheap. However, the main limiting factors there were obsidian and diamonds. Yeah, I would need a lot of those. I decided to make a bow and some arrows later that day because range would be very good against the spirits. However, for now, I definitely will not be fighting them. Day 16, my goals were to work towards enchantments and also some other elemental essences. There was an air biome right next to my stuff, so I headed over there and I began scaling it with water. And then I saw a fire biome. Literally just the opposite direction I went from my base, like 50 blocks, boom, right there, fire biome. That's great because it was so close and I could easily access it, but like, Dang. I got on top of the air biome and it was an absolutely massive windy plains. I ran around collecting the essence flowers for most of the day and then I recalled home. I then made two lesser Ventus gems and two Ventus daggers. Then I waited for nighttime to test out the daggers. I threw in at the skeleton, which first of all died in one hit, which is insane damage, and it also launches the body into the sky meaning it probably does that to the living mobs too. Test successful, but now there was a problem. I can't get to my bed because there were these insanely strong zombies everywhere. Yeah, I wasn't about that. I sat in my tree the whole night. I was not about to deal with any of these crazy strong mobs. And I saw a cluster of these zombies at one point and I tried to throw my Ignis dagger at them to see if it would be a good way to deal with a bunch of them. And I, I missed. Yeah. The next morning I get down from my tree and after grabbing my bed that I blew up, instantly a pillager group shows up. I literally cannot catch a break right now. Regardless, my goal for the next few days was to get books for enchantments. I spent the next three and a half days hunting animals for leather, gathering sugarcane, and all that fun stuff. Sugarcane definitely ended up being the hardest part. It took ages to get enough. And then I get back halfway through day 20, and then I realized that I did not get enough sugarcane. For some reason, I thought that I only needed 45 sugarcane, but nope, I needed three times as much. Nice. So I harvested my sugarcane farm to get some more, and by the way, look at this cute little thing that moved into my sugarcane farm. I don't know what it is, but I like it. And then I decided that I should work on a bit of building. I didn't have a house yet, which was very dangerous if I was ever up at night. It would also give the sugarcane a chance to grow because the area would be loaded. So for days 21 and 22, I built the base of my tower. I decided that the first level of my tower would be fire themed, and I didn't quite have enough nether bricks to finish it, but I was nearly there. I also placed the bookshelves that I can make right Right now and then I grabbed my little sugarcane friend and a mob capture device and I put him in my house. I named him Goat. Look at this guy, he's pretty cool. So yeah, my very scuffed half-finished base was complete. 
Nice. Now I just really needed more sugarcane and more experience. So I decided to go on a journey to find dungeons or sugarcane or maybe even both. My priorities right now are to get an enchanted pickaxe for easier diamonds and obsidian and also an enchanted bow or sword to fight the spirits. If I could get those two things, mastering the elements would be a piece of cake. I decided to venture near the fire biome near my base and there was a village. I don't know if this is where I would choose to put my village, but more power to them. That fire biome led me to a desert which helped me a lot with the remaining sugarcane. The next morning, I went to a desert temple that I found, and inside, I got a multi-shot enchanted book. I didn't really plan on using a crossbow, but if it ended up happening, this could be good. After getting through that desert, I had plenty of sugarcane, meaning I just needed experience, and I would maybe finally be able to hold my own against the elemental spirits. I found a mini tower at the end of that day, but it barely gave it any experience, so not really worth it. Day 25, a quarter of the way through this challenge and I hadn't even come close to mastering a single element. I knew that it would get a lot easier and faster after the first one, but I was getting a little stressed. I found this desert temple dungeon and honestly, it was pretty cool. It was a maze and there was a bunch of husk spawners throughout it. And then there's one little baby husk in full gold armor with a weapon starts going crazy on me. I kind of almost died to it, but I survived. This dungeon ended up getting me to level 30 and got me a few extra god apples, which could be very useful. Day 26, I decided to head home. I had level 30, enough books for enchantments, and I just had to get lucky and I could master the fire element very soon. On the way home, I grabbed some obsidian for my enchantment table and I also took down this tower dungeon for experience and more golden apples and stuff like that. Once I got home, I set up my enchantment stuff and then I immediately put power four and unbreaking three on my bow. This would be amazing for dealing with spirits. Day 27, I figured that it would be a good idea to get some arrows. I was hunting chickens for most of the day and then I realized that this was very slow and very dumb. So instead, I went to the village by the fire biome. I reset the Fletcher's trades over and over until he sold arrows and then I bought as many as I could. Now I could work on the fire element. Element. However, I will admit that I was a little bit afraid of, you know, dying, so I decided to use most of my diamonds to make a diamond chest plate. Just a bit of extra armor could go a long way. I headed home that night, and on the way, I got to level 30. Day 28, I wanted to do my final preparations before attempting to farm the fire spirits. I headed over to a ruined portal and mined a bit of obsidian. I then went home and I used the obsidian to make an ignis dagger, and then I enchanted it with sharpness 4. So now I had a good melee weapon and a good ranged weapon. That night, it was time. I went over to the fire biome and I hunted spirits. Although the journey to get over to the fire biome was a little bit dangerous. This night dude straight out of Dark Souls was trying to end me, but I was able to get away. Then I sorta accidentally threw my dagger at a mountainside immediately. Nice. Yeah, not the best idea to have the dagger as my main weapon. Good to know. Farming fire spirits was kind of stressful because whenever they died, I had a few seconds to grab the essence before they would explode, which as I learned before, could insta-kill me. By day 29, I only had four Ignis Essence. That was not great. A big issue that I had that night was walking into fire. It made it really hard to get around the area and find new spirits, so I decided to spend all of day 29 taking a water bucket to a massive area, clearing as much fire as I could. Pretty quickly, I had a nice open area to grind in. It made it a lot easier to farm the essence. By the next day, I had gained 12 more essence, bringing me to a total of 21, and I needed like two stacks. This was gonna be a long grind. I ended up going back to the village to trade for more arrows, only to see that my Fletcher villager had been zombified. I did find a diamond helmet on the ground though, which is nice. I then turned another villager into a Fletcher and got more arrows. And I'm not gonna bore you with too many more details, but uh, this grind was very annoying. I'd find a spirit, try and take it out, and then randomly a bunch of these stupid invisible skeletons swarm me and make it 10 times harder. Not fun. It was actually so bad that I asked the mod developers to enable the spawns for the spirits during the day. That's not cheating, it's just a new feature. Yeah. After that, the grind, while still a pain, was a lot better. I ended up using my sword after a while, which was a little bit more difficult, but I burned through arrows way too fast. By day 39, I had gotten enough essence for everything I needed to master the fire element. And as if I hadn't seen enough of them already, the second that I get home, I get jump scared by an invisible skeleton. 
Not what I needed after that grind vest. Now I can make tier two Ignis gems. First things first, I made a blow gun and blow darts. Ignis ones to be specific. This was basically a bow that fired Ignis daggers, AKA a rocket launcher. Look at this. As fun as running around blowing stuff up is, I really had to prioritize diamonds right now, which is another reason the fire element is a great first element because check this out. By using the tier two gems, I could then make an Ignis pickaxe, which then mines in a three by three and will be a fantastic for diamond mining. I then checked my diamond pickaxe enchantment and boom, fortune three. Then I checked the Ignis pickaxe and without even having level 30, I could get silk touch. I now had the ultimate setup for diamond mining. Day 40, I wanted to go mining for diamonds, but I desperately needed food. I went hunting and I tried to use the blowpipe, but unfortunately it didn't cook the food, so I would just use my sword and save the darts for later. While hunting, I found a lava pool and I learned that the Ignis pickaxe was amazing for getting obsidian, so I grabbed a bunch for later. After spending the rest of that day hunting, I recalled home and I cooked all my food. On day 41, while the food was cooking, I went to gather coal and wood because I was low on both of those. After doing that, I grabbed my food and then I went mining. I needed tons of diamonds to get all the equipment for these elements, so I had to get to work. I went down a cave and I got to mining with the Ignis pickaxe. I learned pretty immediately that the Silk Touch enchantment only works in the middle block that I mined, meaning I had to be very careful with diamonds. Which of course I messed up the very first time that I found diamonds. I also realized that this Ignis pickaxe absolutely destroys its own durability as I mine, so it wouldn't last very long. I mined until it broke and that thing definitely served its purpose, getting me up to 46 diamonds. Day 42, I needed glass. Every elemental gem took eight glass, so to make a full set of Ignis armor, I would need multiple stacks. I made a few iron shovels, and then I went to look for a desert. Before leaving, though, I saw one of those crazy strong zombies, and I decided to test my blowpipe. It took like six explosive darts straight to the face before finally going down. Yeah, I would definitely want to get stronger before fighting them too often. After mining a ton of sand in a desert, I recalled home, and I began smelting it into glass. And almost all of day 43 was spent just watching the glass. Smell. Then, after it was smelted, I made it. I made 24 diamond vessels, then 24 lesser Ignis gems, then 24 normal Ignis gems, and then a full set of Ignis armor. This armor had insane defenses, it gave regeneration 1, and it gave fire resistance permanently. This was a really big moment. Day 44, my goal was to enchant the Ignis armor. I hadn't fully mastered the Ignis element yet. To master the element, I had to defeat the aspect of that element. Aspects were powerful bosses and I wanted to be strong enough to safely defeat them. I was gonna go hunt dungeons, so I quickly made as many Ignis darts as I could make. That of course does mean that I would have to grind a bit more essence later, but with this armor that'd be super easy. By the end of that day, I found a dungeon. I went in and turns out it was a dungeon full of the super strong zombies. I was able to hold my own, sorta. I had to back off and fire Ignis darts to take them out, but after a bit, I realized that there was no way that I could take them all on safely because they were spawning so often, so I had to retreat. I did get to level 31 though. My enchantment options were not the best, but I saw Vite 3 on a helmet and I figured, okay, more HP would be nice. So I went for it and I got fire protection on the armor that gives fire resistance. Nice. Day 45, I found another one of these arena things with tons of spawners and amazing loot. I got a bunch of EXP and another totem of undying. And then I found something incredible. It was a house and it ended up being a dungeon for the really strong undead. It went underground and for a bit I farmed these zombies that spawned for a bit of EXP. But then after a while I noticed that there was seemingly a better room down there, almost built to farm EXP. I fired an Ignis dart at the first spawner destroying it and then after clearing a few more zombies, I rushed in and I blocked off the doorway to the next room. Then I had an amazing mob farm. Tons of zombies spawning constantly, running straight to me. They took a lot of hits because of course they were super tanky, but that didn't matter. This was perfect. After grinding to level 34, I recalled home. Then the next day, as if the mob farm was not already good enough, I enchanted a sword and I got Sage's Blessing 5 on breaking three and looting three. This was the perfect grinding sword. I didn't get any other good enchantments, but this sword gave me a really good idea. First off, Sage's Blessing makes it so I get more experience whenever I kill a mob. I grab my enchantment setup, 
and I made my way back to the mob farm. I then rebuilt the setup down there, and now I had a very solid way to farm enchantments. This is probably the most efficient that I've ever been with enchanting in any of my videos ever, and I very much so liked it. And with this sword, these zombies gave a lot more EXP. One of the first enchantments that I got was a Sharpness 3 book, which let me farm even faster. Then, on my chest plate, I got a curse, and I can't remove a curse, and this curse kills passive mobs near me. Meaning, if I accidentally wore it inside my house, it could hurt goat. And I can't let that happen, so I had to be very careful. I grinded for the next two days straight to get the best gear that I possibly could. By day 49, I had insane enchantments. Just look at this sword. This sword is crazy. I also had a really good power 5 infinity bow. Three of my armor pieces of course got the curse that could kill goats, so I couldn't wear them in the house. Or so I thought. I ran over to a wild rammer just to see what happened, and it didn't damage it or kill it at all. All, meaning goat was safe. Nice. The last thing that I needed before finally mastering my first element was a bit more Ignis Essence. I spent the rest of the day in the fire biome farming for more essence. And after farming enough, I headed home. I made my gems and I made two more sets of Ignis darts just to have enough. Then I made an Ignis Hammer. This hammer was the key to challenging the Ignis aspect in mastering the element. Day 50. Halfway through the days and it's finally the day that I master my first element of four. Yeah, I had a lot of work to do. Regardless, it was time to challenge the Ignis aspect. I honestly expected the fight to be pretty easy. I had fire resistance and a rocket launcher blowpipe. What could go wrong? So, the way that you challenge an aspect is you take the hammer and you use it on a crystal in the biome of the same element. I went to the fire biome and I looked around for a crystal in a good spot. I found one right next to a savanna biome, I got out the hammer, and then I challenged the aspect. The Ignis aspect spawned. It was like this crazy magma phantom creature. I fired a bunch of darts at it, but I learned pretty quickly that those ended flying way too far away, so I used my arrows and my sword for the rest of the fight. This thing was an absolute absolute joke now that I had acquired Ignis armor. Its main claim to fame was the fire aura, but I nullified it completely. I fought this thing for a bit, absolutely obliterating its HP, and then after a while, I took it out. I, of course, immediately ran away from where I killed it because I knew how this thing worked, and, uh, yep, it exploded. However, I, uh, didn't get the correct drops. Ahem, <laughs> don't mind if I just fix that real quick. Not cheating, this is fine. Full disclosure, this was fixed in the mod right after it happened, so if you Play the mod yourself, you're good to go. With the pure Ignis gems that I now had, I was able to go back home and craft the Ignis sword. I had now mastered the element of fire, and this sword was kind of insane. Not only does it do a lot of damage, but also check this. Yeah, it has an ability to rapidly fire three Ignis knives, which is very strong. However, it does do quite a bit to the durability, and it also risks blowing up my own house or something if I try to use my shield or whatever. Yeah, I would have this not in my first slot for now for safety reasons. Okay, with that down, I now wanted to enchant an Ignis sword and then work on my next element. I had decided on water as my next element because it felt like a good idea and also I was hoping the armor would help me get Prismarine for my tower. I then went to the mob farm to grind for a good enchantment on my Ignis sword. I cycled many enchantments for a very long time and I never saw Sharpness 4. So after grinding for two days, I gave in and I got sharpness 3. Not ideal, but it was still a really strong sword. On day 53, I wanted to find a water biome. I did what I should have done with the fire biome, and I made a nature's compass. I went to search for it, but for some reason, all of the biomes were listed as water, not really sure why, but two of them had grass blocks, meaning one of them was the water biome, and the other one was the air biome. I tried one and I followed it, and it was definitely going right to the air biome, so I chose the other one instead. And this biome was... Not very close. I grabbed my bed and then I headed for the water biome. I reached a water biome at the end of that day and it looked amazing. Definitely my favorite looking elemental biome. I saw a water spirit and I decided to take it out and oh boy, this is gonna suck. These gave poison and slowness and nothing I could get was gonna make me immune to that, meaning I had to just eat that damage while farming these. However, a big plus side is that they don't blow up after dying, which is fantastic. All right, y'all know the dream. Drill, it is time to grind. From days 54 to 60, I gathered lesser aqua essence from flowers and I farmed normal aqua essence from water spirits. The water puddles in this biome were 
kind of annoying. They slowed me down a bunch whenever I walked over them, but they were not nearly as bad as the fire in the fire biome. Overall, the grind was just a lot easier than the fire element. The biome was a lot nicer to be in, it was way prettier, and the lack of explosions made it way less stressful to farm the essence. Also, I personally feel like a water spirit surrounded in water particles should not be able to be lit on fire, but that's just me. After grinding, I ended up back home on day 60, and a wandering trader made a very bad choice of coming close to my house, and my enchantment just started destroying him. Poor guy. All right, bad news, I did not have enough diamonds for the aqua element stuff. I went back to the fire biome, and I spent all of day 61 farming out enough fire essence for two ignis pickaxes. Then, the next day, I got to mining. I mined for a while, and by the time both the picks broke, I had 56 diamonds. I had kinda hoped for more because I needed a lot more for the other two elements, but this would do for now. Day 63, I needed more glass for the aqua stuff, so I went back to the desert to gather tons of sand. Then, that night, I was able to make all of the aqua gear a full set of aqua armor a aqua blowpipe aqua darts and an aqua hammer i tested the blowpipe on a skeleton but it didn't do anything which i assume is because it gives poison poison does not work on undead meaning this probably was not going to help much against the undead army day 64 the day that i master the aqua element i tested the blowpipe on some creepers that morning and it didn't seem to poison them however it did do a lot of damage so i was going to use it against the aqua aspect. I also wanted to wear the aqua armor for this, even though I didn't really have to. It was unenchanted, so that might have been a dumb idea, but it was a bit more thematic. I headed to the water biome, and I found a crystal. This was going to be my first fight with my ignis sword, which I had been saving because of the low durability. I readied the hammer, and I began the fight. This crazy water jellyfish came out and began flying after me. I hit it with my blowpipe, and it turns out the darts do, in fact, poison. I then ran in with my ignis sword to do more damage while well, the poison did its thing. I got poisoned and this aspect of aqua kept flying around and dodging my attacks and then hitting me from my blind spots. Pretty quickly I hit a half HP from the constant attacks and the poison and I had to eat steak to heal up. I used the blowpipe to keep my distance while I healed and then I fired a barrage from my ignis sword, which the aspect of aqua dodged most of, go figure. I hit it with a few more darts to keep the poison up and then I went in with my ignis sword. Once again I could not tell where it was and it kept hitting me from behind and I had to eat a god apple because it was damaging me insanely fast. And then it was dead. I guess it burned to death, kinda anticlimactic, but I got my pure aqua gems and replaced my god apple, so we're good. I went home and I made the aqua sword. I had now mastered the aqua element. I went over and tested it on a squid by attacking super fast to not, you know, one-shot it. And this sword applies an insane poison debuff. And because I had no ability when I right clicked, I could safely use it with a shield, so I plan on making this my main sword. Day 65, I wanted to enchant this sword. I had a decent amount of experience, and I figured that I wouldn't have to grind too much. I got to the mob farm, and first off, I enchanted my boots with Depth Strider 3. Then I got a Sharpness 3 book, grinded a bit more EXP, and got Sharpness 3 on the sword. Then I combined it with the book for Sharpness 4. I now had a very very strong sword. The next day, I wanted to finally continue my base. It was embarrassingly unfinished, so I wanted to change that. The next element that I wanted to add to it was water, which I wanted prismarine for. This aqua armor would help a ton with that. Then, to make it even better, I put aqua affinity on my helmet with a book that I had. Then, I set out to find an ocean temple. I stepped into the river near my base, and just look how fast that I am. Depthshire 3 with Dolphin's Grace 2 is insane. Along the way, I found some cows, and I grabbed milk, and then I grabbed the entire cow as well, just in case I ran out. By that night, I still had not found an ocean biome, and I didn't even bring my bed, so I couldn't even sleep. I spent the next bit looking for an ocean, and then after finding one, I swam around the entire thing at the speed of light looking for prismarine. And that ocean did not have a single temple in it. So I kept going. Something a little weird happened too. I found this desert one night, and in it, a mummy. I thought it was just a normal enemy, but no, this was definitely a mini boss. It started throwing sand at me and summoning sand zombies, and whenever I got close, it would punch me away with a sand spirit. I eventually took it out, and it dropped a necklace that said it would punch away things targeting me. I equipped it and tried it out. Whenever a mob came up to hit me, a sand spirit would come out and just punch it away. I loved this, and it sort of fits the whole elementalist thing, because it was still sort of earthy, so I would use it. Then, 
after that, I found an ocean monument. And this was incredibly annoying to mine for a while. However, after a bit, I realized that an elder guardian that I killed dropped a bauble that made me immune to mining fatigue. That was amazing, and it made this a lot easier. I mined for a bit, and then I recalled home. Day 69, I built the water level of my tower. It didn't have a roof yet, because I wanted to use the next layer for that, and I also didn't really have a use for that floor anyways, but it looked pretty cool. Day 70, my base was expanded, I had mastered the water element, and now it was time for the air element Ventus. I fortunately had an air biome right next to my base, so it wasn't that difficult to travel there and back. I swapped my Ignis armor and then I made my way up the mountain. At the top, I encountered my first air spirits. I tried attacking one, but it was completely immune to melee attacks. It also gave me levitation, and if not for my sand spirit knocking it away, I might have just died to fall damage. So yeah, air spirits are completely immune to melee, but they have way less HP than other spirits. This meant that I could destroy them with a bow and in all honesty, because my bow is my go-to way to farm, this would be way faster. And 100%, it was a lot faster. It still took a few days, but being able to take out these spirits in one or two arrows saved tons of time. By day 74, I once again had enough essence, but not enough diamonds. So I once again spent the whole day grinding for some essence for Ignis picks. Then day 75, I went mining. Hopefully, this would be my last mining trip. I mined until the middle of day 76. I had quite quite a bit of diamonds. I'm not sure if it was enough for the rest of the 100 days, but it was enough for now. I was able to make a bunch of Ventus gems, a full set of Ventus armor, a Ventus blowpipe, a bunch of Ventus darts, and the Ventus hammer. That was everything I needed except for the sword. This armor gave speed to and slow falling, and it would be the ultimate traveling armor, and I definitely wanted to enchant it before fighting the Ventus aspect. The Ventus spirits gave me levitation, and if the aspect did as well, slow falling would be very very important. I ran over to my mob farm and I enchanted the Ventus armor. I got protection 4 leggings, a protection 3 unbreaking 3 chest plate, an unbreaking 3 helmet, and after a bit of grinding I got protection 4 unbreaking 3 boots. The next morning I tested out the Ventus blowpipe. This fires a wind projectile and it makes the mobs that it hits just fly into the sky and then drop down taking tons of fall damage. This would probably be very bad against the boss, but it'd be a great way to deal with mobs that I'm having trouble with. Just when in doubt, send them to space. After that fun, I made my way up the mountain that was the air biome. I located a crystal and using the hammer, I challenged the aspect of Ventus. This thing was a cute little ghosty boy and I tried hitting it with arrows and nope, they did nothing. While the spirits were immune to melee, the aspect of Ventus was immune to projectiles. I went in with my sword and then my sand spirits had the aspect flying away. It got so far away that it lost aggro so I had to take off the sand necklace and then build up with blocks so the aspect wouldn't just leave the fight. I kept meleeing it at close range with my aqua sword, and for a bit it became a super cool sky fight when I was levitating in the air, but then levitation wore off, and I had to build up again to keep the aggro. This little song and dance happened one more time. I hit it a bit with my sword, lost levitation, lost aggro, and then I had to build up one final time, and then it was over. I leapt off my pillar and delivered the final blow, defeating the aspect of Ventus. I floated down to the ground, and I collected my pure Ventus gems. I recalled home and I crafted the Ventus Battle Staff, Element of Air Mastered. This staff had no ability whenever I right clicked, meaning it had to do something whenever I hit a mob. I went and tested it on a pig and the second that I hit it, it flew straight up insanely fast. I literally couldn't even see it anymore, but a few seconds later, it fell back down. Now, this was sending mobs to space, way better than the blowpipe. This was pretty bad for any mob that I wanted the drops from, so I would still use the Aqua Sword as my main weapon, but honestly, I had so much cool stuff now that it was really hard to decide what to use. Day 78. Now that I had mastered my third element, I wanted to expand my base to represent that. I didn't really know a good block for air, so I just used a bunch of this marble that I gathered underground. I made the floor out of marble bricks, and then I put pillars made of marble up around the edges. And I didn't fill in the walls completely because, like, air... 
Yeah. And once again, I did not add a roof because I was waiting until I made the next and final level. The next morning, I looked at my tower from the outside and it was beginning to look, uh interesting i now needed to master the earth element i repaired my bow and then i spent day 79 hunting food because i knew i would need a lot day 80 i got out my nature's compass and i headed towards the nearest earth biome which fortunately was very close i get to the earth biome grab a few flowers and then i approach an earth spirit and it explodes a lot this was going to be the most difficult grind yet actually it uh, turns out that it was completely impossible the earth spirits were immune to arrows and not only that whenever i hit them with my sword they would explode like a hundred times destroying any drops that they would have had yeah i had to get that fixed it ended up being changed so they could be hit by arrows which worked perfectly after that i spent the next few days farming terra essence having hitboxes on made it a lot easier to see the spirits and with that the grind was also a lot easier however it still took quite a long time to get all the essence that I needed. And interestingly enough, this is the first element where the hardest part was not the spirits, it was the flowers. After getting all the spirit drops I needed, I had to go find a whole other earth biome to get the essence. But by day 86, I had all of my Terra essence. I needed a bit more glass, so after gathering sand and smelting it, I made all of my Terra gear. A full set of Terra armor, a Terra blowpipe and darts, and a Terra hammer. This armor gave resistance and and haste too. This was the ultimate combat gear and I definitely wanted to enchant it. I tested the Terra blowpipe and it made a stone bridge of sorts to wherever the dart landed. This could be useful though not really the best. Now I just wanted to enchant the Terra gear and then I could defeat the Terra aspect and master the element. Day 87, I headed for my mob farm for my final enchantments. Once I got there and killed a few zombies, I enchanted my leggings and I got very good enchantments. Next, my chest plate, also very good enchantments. I didn't even have to reset the table and I had already gotten protection four twice in a row. Then a third time in a row, protection four on my helmet. The boots weren't quite as lucky, so I enchanted a book for feather falling three. I then enchanted them with level 30 and I got depth strider three in unbreaking three. No protection, but when the full set of armor was so good anyways, I figured I'd be fine. Day 88, in my newly enchanted armor, I headed for an earth biome to take down the Terra aspect. I located a crystal, took down the nearby earth spirits, and then I readied my hammer. I used the hammer, and then I summoned the aspect of Terra. This one was a stone golem, and it didn't even fly. After a bit of fighting, though, it did start exploding. This launched both me and the aspect into the air, which gave me an idea. I used used my Ventus blowpipe to send the aspect into the air and then fire at it with my bow. It took tons of fall damage, but every time it landed, it would blow me up. After a few Ventus darts, the aspect had 1 HP and it just like sat there. I walked up to it and then using my water sword, I took it out. I had defeated my final aspect. I headed home and I used the pure gems to make the Terra Mace. The final element was mastered. I tried out the Terra Mace's ability and this gave me slowness 5, resistance 5, and regen 5 all at the same time. Basically a full heal at the cost of not moving. And this replaced my god apples for now. Day 89. I now wanted to finish my tower using the final mastered element. And to do that I needed a lot of materials so I spent a lot of the day mining a bunch of granite from the nearby mountain. I also wanted andesite, but I couldn't really find a worthwhile amount anywhere, so I used cobblestone instead. After that, I spent the rest of day 89 and all of day 90 finishing my tower. I made the walls out of cobblestone bricks, the floor out of cracked granite, and I added iron bar windows. By sunset of day 90, my elemental tower was complete. It might not have been the prettiest, but it was certainly unique. Day 91, I was nearing the end, and it was time to take down the undead army. To challenge the undead king, I had to acquire rotten blocks from towers of the undead army. I had actually found one of these towers while I was farming in the air biome before, so I equipped my Ventus armor, and I headed for the tower. I found the tower, I took out the air spirits surrounding it, and then I swapped to my Terra armor and went in. I made my way through the insanely tanky zombies, and even with my Terra armor, I was still taking damage. I didn't not have to resort to my Terra Mace though, and using my Ignis Sword, I was able to cut through all the undead fairly safely. They really tried me though. The floors that had air spirits would levitate me into the ceiling, leaving me completely vulnerable to attacks from the ranged undead. After fighting through tons of the undead army, I reached the top 
lore. After breaking the spawners and looting the chests, I claimed my first rotten block. I needed four of these, but that is one down. I now had to find more towers, so I swapped my Ventus armor and I got looking. Now, the issue is these towers are very rare. Luckily, I had a very good traveling setup with my Ventus armor for land and my Aqua armor for water, but still, it was not easy to find these towers. And I kept traveling for a while trying to find them. I didn't have that many days left either, so I was really worried that I wouldn't find them fast enough. Day 95, I finally found a second tower of the undead army. I took out the first swarm of zombies, and then after going in, I very stupidly chose to use my Ignis Sword's ability, which honestly hurt me more than it helped me. I was fighting the undead on the next floor when I get blindsided by a zombie with an axe, and it forces me to use my Terra Mace's ability. These towers were no joke. I cleared the rest of the tower, and then I got my second rotten block. I then came to the terrifying realization that my Terra helmet was going to break. I decided that I would use my Ignis armor for the next tower because it gave me regeneration and it had more durability and I definitely needed the Terra stuff for the Undead King. I then got extra lucky and found another tower that night. I ran through and took out all the Undead and then after reaching the top, I was not even going to deal with them. I used my Ventus staff to send them to the moon. Third rotten block down, however, my Ignis helmet was now also almost broken. Day 96, I had to temporarily pause my search. The the armor situation was way too risky. I mined cobblestone for furnaces and some coal for smelting, and then I went into a cave to get iron to make an anvil. And then, in the cave, I found a dungeon. I killed the mobs, broke the spawner, and looted the chest for a mending book. I've never gotten mending from a normal underground dungeon before, but that is actually insane. After getting my anvil, I repaired my Terra helmet with Terra gems, and then I put mending on my Ignis sword. This sword was easily my strongest weapon against the undead because they were immune to my water sword poison, and the mending would definitely counteract the low durability. After that, I set out to find my final tower. That night, I ended up killing a tank zombie with my looting sword, and I got a zombie head. I also needed this for the Undead King, so I'm glad that I got it now. All of day 97 was spent just searching. I was getting super worried about my remaining time, but then on the morning of day 98, I found my final tower. I went in and worked my way up. I got down to half HP a few times, but over Overall, I was able to tank it pretty well. The guys in leather armor with axes did way more damage than they had any right to, but it was not enough to stop me. It did not take long for me to reach the top and claim my final rotten block. I was now ready for the Undead King. I spent the rest of day 98 heading home. Day 99, the day the Undead King falls. I went off into a secluded area, placed my rotten blocks, and then finally, the zombie head. The king spawned, and instantly I was blinded and given slowness. I attacked him a few times with my sword, and then I backed off and fired my explosive attack. At that point, he started summoning even more undead to help him, and I was getting very overwhelmed. I swapped my Ventus staff and began sending the undead into the sky because it dealt with them way faster. I didn't want to get too low, so I used my Terra Mace, which ended up getting me surrounded by zombies. I had to eat a god apple after that because my health was just melting. I kept attacking with my Ignis sword over and over, shredding the HP of the undead army. And then, I tried to spam against the horde with my Ventus blowpipe. This glitched out and gave me an infinite levitation 10 effect that I had to re-log to fix. Yikes. I logged back in and fell to the ground and the fight resumed. The undead king must have also been hit by levitation because he took a ton of fall damage all at once. I ended up getting swarmed and I tried to deal with them with my Ignis blowpipe and my Ignis sword's ability, but honestly it ended up hurting me way more than them. I ate another god apple, focused down the undead king, and within a few moments he was defeated. I ran around using my Ventus staff to send the remaining members of the undead army to the moon, and with that I had one. I ended up getting Tears of the Undead King from that. They could be used to make a set of gear, but uh, I didn't have enough diamonds for all that, and the Tears would just be their own trophy. I headed back home, and on the water level of my tower, there were assassins that were sent to take me out, but nah, I was too strong for that. Also, apparently my water level was not well lit enough. Good to know. Day 100. I had set up armor stands to showcase every element that I mastered. Ignis. Aqua, Ventus, and finally, 
Terra. These elements helped me take down the Undead King as an Elementalist. I had one last thing I wanted to do before wrapping this up. I grabbed Goat and I brought him outside. I fed him a golden apple and he began to change. After a few moments, Goat evolved into a Grand Rammer. In the past 100 days, I mastered four elements defeated an undead army, and now I have a grand rammer named Goat. And now the journey is complete. That was 100 days as an elementalist in hardcore Minecraft. Thank you everybody for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that, and I will see you all in the next video later.